Alrighty, folks. We gather here today. We gather here today for the almighty return <laughs> of Scarlet Hollow. Um, I think the next like update for the game is not going to be until next year, but I still haven't played the fourth episode um, for my second run. So that's what we're here doing today. Uh, obviously I've seen the ending of this before, but I'm gonna do completely different choices. Um, we're gonna do this, like I said, with the second run. So let's dive on in. For those of you that don't know, this is probably like my favorite question mark visual novel game. <laughs> It, and then and spooky game, it's definitely up there in my top choices. Let's let's get a recap. Yeah, it's been a minute. So we know about the bus ride and going back to see our cousin. That's the whole point of everything. Is we had to come here because our aunt died. Um, you wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. Yeah, she's cheap. Tabitha is cheap. Okay. <laughs> the funeral of Pearl and Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt, seems like something you shouldn't ignore. Even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with the side of the family. There's Tabby! Welcome to our family's humble estate. So, yeah, this is Tabby. Um, this is, yeah. She just said it's our family's estate. I was about to say that. I'm sorry. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to go up. Okay, so the first thing we did was we saved Duke in this version, which is depressing. Very hard for me to do, but I wanted to do like opposite choices of what I did in the original run. So. We saved Duke. Tabitha looks so scared in that picture. Oh, Tabitha's awesome. She uh, hunts cryptids. <laughs> she has a YouTube channel. This might be the right one. Yeah. So that was another save that I did with a friend that I forgot about. <laughs> but this is our, our, the current save of this one. Tabitha wants us to come home. All right, Tabby. And the other one, I'm like this with Tabitha, you know what I mean? But in this one, I'm like, no. Oh, I didn't go in, that's right. Okay. Have either of you seen Rosalina around town? This, oh my God, gets me every time. That's not being a helicopter dad. Reese! Oh my god. Uh, I love Reese. Every YouTube plan is probably beyond what he can manage right now. Are you sure? I want to befriend Wayne. Apparently there's an, an option to romance Wayne. I'm like, how can that even happen? Like, he's never around long enough for you to have any kind of, like, conversation with him. Except for, like, the short conversation you have with him, uh... In... Episode 3. Where he, like, breaks through the wall and he kills the ditchling. Oh, that's what those little white creatures are. I don't think we saved anybody. Or we might have just saved Rosalina and now she's like angry as all hell at us. <laughs> okay. Okay, so yeah, the thing. Oh, we didn't save anybody. Mm -hmm. 
She still creeps me out. I don't like Janie. I don't like him. And we're probably gonna go in the freaking church. That's so creepy to me. <gasps> Reese, yes, the tortured artist. Okay. So I don't remember even where this one starts. The recap is so long. Okay, what happened in the ghost hunt? This is important. I brought Becca with us. <sighs> it didn't even have the noise and it still spooked me. There's Wayne. This is what I was talking about. The ditch and gone die. Oh, don't look. If you're squeamish. Ugh, so gross. One of you must forfeit, it doesn't matter which. No, I am not forfeiting. Maybe things only get worse from here. It's a new day and you feel like shit. In the bright morning light, you're finally able to take stock of just how much the spirit took from you. Oh, that's right. I gave my, that's right. I gave my life to the spirit. It's great. I can't wait to finally be dead. <laughs> Life goes on, it happened yesterday, it happened yesterday, and today is another day. I hope this was worth it. Maybe it was worth it. Who knows what would have happened if you had left it behind to fester. Then again, who knows what will happen to you now that you've lost part of yourself. I don't know if that was the right decision, but we can always do another run, you know. Hey, just wanted to check in, hope you're doing a little bit better. Call her. Okay. Uh, text her. I'm just gonna say this. Because if I say Kanika and I are worried about you, then it's going to be like, like, Kanika's priority texted her, you know? It's going to be like, I'm like, we're both, you know, like, I'm trying not to do that. I don't know, that's just not how I communicate with people. You know, I'm not like, oh, this person and I need you to do this. You know, I'm just like, no, can you do this for me? You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I wouldn't do that. What if Wayne got her? I'm not worried about that. Yeah, let's just say that. Is it the possum? You open the drawers. The two possums stare at you. They both have bread now. That's nice. They continue to stare blankly up at you in response. That <laughs> this is their home now and there's nothing you can do to change that. Did <laughs> all Oh it did move. Oh shit. Your dolls relative long the relatives creepy dolls. The only thing that's different, someone is in here. Judging by the residue that's left behind, you're pretty sure you know the culprit. What? Where is it? What residue? 
that he was there while well, you were out the previous day, or did he enter while you slept? Damn it, Wayne. I should probably shower. Wait a minute, it feels like another thread holding this town together starts to unravel. Thoughts of doom consume you. We're done here. That was a quick shower. But hey, at least I showered. I don't know how much it actually works in a place like this where the pipes probably haven't even been maintenanced in 50 years. They weren't bluffing after all. They're actually striking. And this week of all weeks. As if I haven't had enough on my plate already. Oh yeah, they're striking at the mines because of the mine collapse. Your cousin's posture is surprisingly relaxed for everything that's fallen on her plate lately. She must have something up her sleeve to deal with the miners. Does it even matter how the strike plays out? Any resolution would merely treat the symptoms of the disease rotting the heart of Scarlet Hollow. I don't understand what I just read. <laughs> For things to stand any chance of getting better, there's something deeper you still have to fully uncover. She can't get out, I don't think. Talk about what happened last night. So ghosts are real. Still can't get over that. I'm sorry about last night, we should have left. I'm gonna say this one though, she's probably gonna be annoyed. It feels good, doesn't it? Getting rid of something your family left behind like that. I can't believe you're saying that. Have you looked in the mirror? <laughs> what does that change about anything? You're Scarlet, you're probably gonna die young anyways. I still have a mind to run. <laughs> Talk about the strike. Well, Pearl, Pearl Ann didn't die young. A Pearl Ann was sus. Have you heard anything from Stella? If the mine's in trouble, you should just sell it. I'm not just gonna cash out on our family's legacy. I'm bringing the mine back to life one way or another. I'm not very threatened by the whole thing, if that's what you're asking, but I didn't want it to have to come to this. It doesn't matter if it's unpleasant, though. It's just a task and it needs to be done. Give me a couple of days and everything will be back in order. I'm used to playing the part of the villain. If that's what people see me as for holding the place together, then so be it. Fair. Usually I'm pro-union, but... <laughs> Do you know what strikers even want? I'm not going to tell Tabitha what to do, but I am going to say this. The strike is just a symptom of the rot in this place. If we don't treat the underlying disease, it won't even matter who wins. Don't worry yourself over this little rabble. They won't last long, trust me. <laughs> you shouldn't have needed to warn me about a strike. I've only been in this town for three days and it's obvious that this is where this was heading. <laughs> That's just rude. I'm not gonna say that. Have you heard anything from Stella? I can't get a hold of her. No, but that's not exactly newsworthy. I'm sure she's just processing what happened last night. We weren't the only ones who were traumatized. You should probably get going, right? Yeah. I've dawdled long enough. Stay safe. No more hi hijinks. But let me know if you get into trouble, okay? I don't know what that word she said meant. Tabitha slips past you, but her heavy boots thudding down the hall as she marches away to face her employees. Tabitha slips past you, her heavy boots thudding down the hall as she marches away to face her employees. Time to figure out the rest of your day. PB&J.
There's still us MIA, who knows when we get a chance to eat. <laughs> and who knows just how much your new affliction will affect your appetite. You make yourself a PB in anticipation for the long day ahead of you. I don't see a positive way that this could go <laughs> in this run, like being old. The birds sound different today, muffled, like your ears full of cotton. The dull sun shines on the surrounding wilderness, seeming to wash the color from the world. You look at him. Oh. <laughs> He's kind of funny. Is that another one? Like, oh. <laughs> Looking upside down. Oh, there's one here. And one day. Oh. But you're adjusting. Already, your body is starting to accept the change that has come over to it. Yeah. But you're adjusting. Already, your body is starting to accept the change that has come over it, to accept that this is how things will be from here on out. Glimpses of pale figures dot your periphery. You haven't seen ditchlings in the middle of the day before. They're getting bolder. Avery! Hey, I was just coming to see you. I didn't know if he was going to come in this one or not. Hope you were able to get some sleep after everything that happened last night. They don't say anything about your appearance, but you can see them take you in, the light of the day revealing your new features clearly for the first time. You doing okay? The spirit's taken a piece of me, but that's all. It's gone, but I'm still here. Very badass. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah! <laughs> Are you really still... Feeling chill after everything that happened last night. How do you feel now that it's a new day? Possession is the sort of thing that can leave a mark on a person's soul. Aw, thanks for asking about the state of my soul. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'd be lying if I said it didn't have an impact. I kind of feel bruised all over, physically and spiritually. But hey, that's part of life, right? Nobody makes it to the end completely unscathed. I'm kind of thrilled about my new emotional baggage. Oh, and I'm kind of thrilled that my new emotional baggage comes from a ghost instead of some boring normal trauma. <laughs> what is normal trauma? You were coming up to see me. That's sweet. There is ditch things everywhere now, though, even though it's daytime. Avery turns to survey the tree line. I noticed a few on my way up. They're kind of funny now that I'm looking at them. <laughs> With their scrunched up little sharpie faces. So, should I be worried about these things? I know they're a bad omen or something, but are they, like, dangerous? They're not gonna eat me if I take a wrong turn, right? Ew, ew, we don't want to talk about the eggs. I'd rather not find out. Does the town have a flamethrower? <laughs> not if you eat them first. You need only fear what they foretell. Okay, cool and ominous. As long as being eaten alive isn't on the table. Unless they're foretelling a zombie invasion or something with werewolves, in which case, I guess I'm still stuck with being eaten alive. <laughs> have you heard anything from Stella? I haven't heard anything from her, though we don't text much and I haven't checked in with Winnie to see if she came in for an early breakfast or anything. But if you haven't heard anything from her, then that doesn't sound great. Seeing her like this last night was awful. She's usually so unflappable. Should I ask him to come with us to uh, see Stella? Or see if Stella's home? Absolutely, I told Winnie I'd be coming in late today, so I've got to. There's a strike going on, I'm sure you already know about that, yeah. We know about that. Oh shoot, I didn't say... I didn't say any, I didn't say it to him, though. Or, I didn't say it to them. Is it long enough? It isn't long enough until you- God, I need to slow down. 
it isn't long enough until you once again find yourself on the main street of Scarlet Hollow. Abs, you made it! And you picked up Avery along the way. Hope you're both doing okay, like, emotionally. Yeah, I'm not too bad. That's good. I feel like I got crushed by a steamroller or something. Joints all out of whack. Totally exhausted and super foggy. Mom has been insisting I caught a cold, and I wasn't buying it. But as of this morning, I've come around. It's definitely something beyond exhaustion, even considering the ridiculously stressful week we've all had. But I'm not gonna let that stop me from looking for Stella. Do you still think there could be a rational explanation? For all this? Is someone running the general store? I was kind of surprised you reached out to me after the issues between you and Tamitha. I'm supposed to see your mom at some point today. Maybe she'll finally shed some light on things. I think last night just pushed her over the edge. I know I've only known her a couple of days, but it feels like she has a tendency to run from difficult emotions. Usually she just changes the subject, but I guess this time she wound up literally running. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that one. You picked up on that, huh? But you're right, I'm not sure- I'm not, and I'm not about to let her be alone at a time like this. I've made that mistake before. Plus, she could get mobbed by these weird little creatures, or worse. Exactly! This is no time for anyone to be off on their own. Who knows what kind of weird stuff is out there. After the past couple nights, I wouldn't be surprised if there were actual Bigfoots in the woods, just waiting to eat any human who wanders too far from civilization. Do Bigfoots thirst for human flesh? Is that some kind of common knowledge I wasn't keyed in on? I wouldn't be surprised, is all I'm saying. Okay, let's get started. I don't want to waste another minute. We're going to start first. <laughs> where to first? <laughs> okay, let's go to Stella's house. We should go to the cops. Ooh, maybe we go talk to Oscar, yeah. Oh, I'm not saying anything, Avery. I'm supposed to get the tea from your mom today. <laughs> it's funny. Let's go talk to Oscar. I hope nothing else happened after we all went home last night. They were so brave for sleeping in that house after everything we went through. I'd rather sleep in the woods with the ditchlings than in some place that was that haunted. Your mom said it's safe, and I'm inclined to believe her. Why would she lie? But how would she know that? Magic, probably. But there's only one way to find out. Let's go. Yeah, I don't think I visited him last time. Morning light streams in through the library's large windows. In the bright daylight, it's once again a place of comfort, all menace having fled in the wake of Charles Shaw Jr.'s departure. No ghost, thank god. I was not up for an encore. <laughs> I don't think anybody is. Yeah, it's gone, just like your mom said it would be. I guess Oscar must be in the back. I know that's where I'd be if I finally got my house back. I've always been surprised at how unsupervised this place is. Sometimes it feels like anyone could just walk in and do whatever they wanted. Like what? Steal books? I mean, they could, right? I'm not saying anyone would. I'm just saying that people in this town trust each other. A lot. It's nice. Let's go find Oscar. He's from the city, right? I can't remember. You make your way back towards the annex. It feels like... It feels strange to be back here in the light of day. As if the events from the previous evening were all just a terrible dream. More accurately, it feels as if the events of the previous evening were mostly just a dream. That hideous stone carving is still buried in the basement. And though it's subtle and subdued, you can still feel the faintest of hums reaching out from it. This hallway really takes me back. It feels like it was only yesterday that we were last here, blissfully unaware that our li entire lives were about to change forever. It was only yesterday. Oh no. Can he get knocks on the door? Oh, good morning. It's nice to see all of you, abs. 
he takes <laughs> in the sight of me standing in the bright corridor. His expression changes subtly, his eyebrows curving upwards with a twinge of guilt upon seeing you at his door. Aww, poor Oscar. Don't feel guilty. It's okay. You have no idea how good it felt to sleep in my own house last night. Though I suppose I didn't do much sleeping. I mostly sat and stared at the hatch all night. Nothing happened, but the idea that something could happen was more than enough to keep me wide awake. So what brings you here? Stella's been missing since last night. We're trying to figure out if anyone's seen her. She hasn't gotten in touch with any of you? Nope, we have no clue where she's gone. That's not good. I haven't seen her since she ran off last night. I feel terrible. I should have done a better job warning her. I, Stella was practically banging your, down your door to try to get evidence of ghosts. I don't think you were going to be able to stop her. There is no way you could have known how she would react when she found out. I don't even think she knew how she'd react. And besides, you didn't know how bad it was going to get. You can't blame yourself for everything, man. You know, you probably feel like it's your responsibility to make sure everyone around you is okay. But sometimes, that's just not possible. You're only one guy. You're just one guy. I know you've got a lot going on, but let us know if you see her around. After everything we went through last night, I'm worried about her. Sorry that I can't be more helpful, especially after everything y'all have done for us. I know time is of the essence right now, but while you're here, I wanted to let you know that I'm determined to do whatever I can to help investigate what's happening to our town. I was hoping we could compare notes. It might help me narrow down where I should start my research. As far as I'm aware, there was nothing paranormal in Scarlet Hollow before very recently. Now here we are, suddenly surrounded by weird little goblin creatures in the woods, and plagued by angry ghosts. You think it would- there was an enticing event, right? I do. That's my thought too. I was never like this in the holler before. That's my thought too. I was never like this in the holler before. Something must have happened that kicked off all this magic stuff. Avery stares at you. I mean, that's obvious, right? Things only started happening once abs got here. <laughs> You're not wrong. Exactly. There's a catalyst for all of this. Why wouldn't it be lost? A lost Scarlet finally coming home to Scarlet Hollow. If I may, Abs getting into town isn't the only major event that's happened lately. Pearl Ann died over a week ago, and those creatures in the woods were already reproducing by the time she arrived. Not to mention, I started seeing things at our house before Pearl Ann passed, I think. I never thought to make note of exactly when the spirit made itself known. If there's a root cause for all this, hopefully there's a way to put the genie back in its bottle. I'm going to go... I'm going to do my best to find out if there have ever been any similar events, and whether there's anything special about Scarlet Hollow that might explain what's going on. We'll fill you in on what little we know, so you at least have a place to start. Are we sure the ghost is really gone? We've been finding those weird stone seals. There was one in the mines, another in your basement. There might be more. These are the carvings you mentioned last night, right? To think there was something like that under my house at all this time. And to think someone must have put it there, but who? This gives me quite a few threads to follow, thank you. You know, I was thinking about filling that basement with cement and pretending it was never a part of the house, but if we're all here, maybe we should go down and Oscar size. Take a closer look at that carving seal, whatever it is. Oh heck yeah! It'll be like checking out the behind the scenes of the haunted house the morning after. I mean, I know you're joking, but that's literally what we'd be doing, right? Now that you mention it, yeah, I guess that wasn't the best analogy. It's been bad enough going into haunted houses and abandoning coal mines at night, but there's something that feels much worse about going down there in the middle of the day. 
Can't say I'm thrilled about the thought of it either, but we need to do whatever we can to start getting ahead of things. I really don't think this is a good idea. The spirit is gone, but you can still feel a faint hum undulating from the basement. Imminent danger may not await you down there, but the stone itself remains active, if at least weakened. Who knows in what strange ways it might manifest itself. <laughs> Hell no. Ghost or no, there's still a hundred-year-old corpse down there that was murdered by my Meemaw. Never open that hatch again. <laughs> I kind of want to do this. This would be nothing like what we did before. I see we go. If we're gonna trust anyone's instincts on this, it should probably be yours. Okay, let's do this. Heck yes. <laughs> Oscar leads you back down to the familiar hallway to Rosalina's room. Oh, hey dad, what are you doing in here? I'm going back in the basement, Rosa. I'm afraid there's something down there that might help us figure out what's going on town. It's probably best you go to the library while we- No way. If you're going down there, I'm going too. Remember what you said last night? No more secrets. We're in this together. You're right, Rosa. You can come with us. No more secrets. Am I the only person in town who doesn't have a death wish? Sybil said that the ghost is gone. I really don't believe- <sighs> I really don't think there's anything wrong. I really don't think there's anything to be afraid of down there anymore. Just give me a moment to move all this stuff out of the way. Oscar gets to work moving the furniture from the trap door. His broad shoulders making quick work of it. Before you and your companions know it, you find yourselves transfixed on the trap door. He looking at it? I don't want to go back down there. It's okay, Alexis. You don't have to come with us. We can stay up here together while everyone else goes down there. Everybody's heart skips a beat, though. Avery's might have skipped a beat out of excitement rather than fear. <laughs> I don't know if this poster was here before, was it? She was hanging that up, right? But none of you are swept up into the ghost nightmare puppet show. The sun continues to shine. The birds continue singing outside Rosalina's window. See, nothing to be worried about. The slight tremor in his voice tells you he's more mostly saying that to himself. <laughs> yeah, I take that back. I'm good staying up here while you go take a look down there. I do not like the vibes I'm getting from that pit. Descent. Return to the basement. <laughs> he looks angry. Why is he mad? You descend the basement. You descend the basement stairs. You find yourself in the same cold, unfinished place you were in last night. The hum is still faint, but it's louder here. You take a deep breath and push it out of your mind. Well, I guess whatever we're looking for is in that pit. I guess we should take a look. Oscar walks up to the burial site, eyes widening as he peers inside. Okay, let's go. <gasps> the eternally screaming remains of Charles Shaw Jr. are exactly where you left them last night, staring back up at you from empty sockets. The carving lies beneath them, the heavy cold stone acting as its coffin. Strange power emanates from the carving. It feels like some living thing a darkness preserved in stone, buried out of sight and away from any eager hands. Or at least, that was the intention, but power like this can't stay buried forever. Its style is more than just similar to the carving in the mines. Both stones were carved by the same artist. Yeah, so they're connected. Charlie. Whoa, cool. Dang, Charlie, Abs and Grandma really did a number on you. <laughs> Pearl Ann is the one that killed him. 
And there was no reason to kill him. I still don't understand why she did that. But maybe I like was interpreting it wrong. I don't know, but it seemed like because he was like, we can do this, we can make it, we can make it, and then she just, like, killed him. It was odd. I'll have to call Dr. Kelly about this. We should put his body to rest, right? That's how these things usually go. At least, <clears throat> at least in the movies, and hey, we disturbed his body, and he hasn't come back for a sequel. Confirmation that he's gone for good, right? I think so. That's gonna make it a lot easier to sleep tonight. Does that mean you'll let me sleep in my actual bed? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's give it one more night. I still don't know how I feel about you sleeping on top of that rock. <laughs> what do you think? Wolves encircling a goat is a start. What was on the carving in the mines? A circle of arms bound up in chains. Stella took a photo of it. Not that that's helpful right now, but maybe once we find her, she can send it to you. Interesting. I'm sure the description will be more than enough to get started. Can Alexis and I help? I want to know why someone put this creepy stuff under my room. Sure you can help. Should I? Let me save. We should destroy this thing. Are you sure about that? That carving is one of the best leads we have. Dad, that thing stole our house. I suppose it did, and we do have a photo reference to work with. Okay, I'll give it a go. I'll do some research, maybe we can put some sort of acid on it. You and the others make your way back up to Rosalina's room. As soon as you're all in one place, Oscar closes the trap door and moves, moves the pile of furniture back in place. So did y'all get possessed or cursed or anything? No, but we did see a dead body. Close enough. Glad I stayed put. Alexis, do you want to see a picture of it? Ew, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure that's appropriate. Alexis's parents might not approve of you showing their daughter pictures. <laughs> they let her watch all kinds of scary movies, Dad. It's fine. And maybe she can help with the investigation, too. Yeah, it's totally okay, Mr. I cannot read that. I do not want to see it in person, but I do want to see it. Before Oscar has a chance to get in another word, Rosalina has already pulled up the picture on her phone. Whoa, I can't believe you're gonna sleep in here. You're so brave. Oscar sighs. I'll be back to check on you in two minutes. I've just got a couple things to finish up with these folks. You and Kanika and Avery follow Oscar back into the living room. So, I have more than enough to get started on my research now, but is there anything else I should know about? I wonder if this could be the work of some sort of cult. Make sure Pixel stays inside. Yeah. The Ditchlings are those things from the woods, right, with those faces. Yeah, the English Doughboys. I kind of like them. It's a hidden object game out there today, with all the little weird faces peering out of the bushes. <laughs> like them? Are we talking about the same creatures that have been laying eggs in local wildlife? I don't want to get friendly with them or anything. I just think they're kind of interesting. To each their own. Will do. I can't imagine how devastated Rosalina would be if something were to happen to him. Especially after everything she's been through. Good, because I can't go out there and save Pixel because I don't have, um... The trait or whatever. I think there's something in the clinic. There was this door yesterday. I could feel something pulling me towards it. 
You didn't mention anything like that yesterday. I see. I'll dig up what I can on the clinic. There's a lot of history there. I wouldn't be surprised if there was something haunting that place as well. You have a friend that lives there, right? Should we tell him that something bad might happen to his house? He might want to stay someplace else for now. If that, if the last few nights are any indication. Yeah, I can shoot Reese a warning text, but I don't know if his mom will let him leave. She's kind of got an iron grip on the poor dude, and she's probably even more of a skeptic than I er, was. Wow, so Kanika's really convinced now. Because remember, she was so gun-ho on, like, ghosts don't exist, like, you know what I mean? Trying to find a practical angle to everything. I'm sure Reese will be fine. <laughs> Oh lord, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? I have no idea how not fine Reese is. I'm gonna break into the clinic and see what I can find. <laughs> no, nope, you were not gonna do that. Let's not ever repeat it last night. We should be more cautious about what to do what we do next. We don't want anyone to get attacked or possessed by any more ghosts, even if that is to help a friend. I don't know if we have time to play it safe. Just give me one day or two to do some research before you do anything rash, okay? I wonder if this could be the work of some sort of cult. I think the cops are in on it. <laughs> they probably are. Maybe it has something to do with the church and that pastor. And for all I know, you're all in on it. Ooh. That would be so interesting. If that was true. I don't think it is, though. I mean, we've seen some real horror in the faces of our companions here. And for all I know, you're all in on it. Kanika raises her eyebrows. Are you for real? Uh, no. I'm not part of a cult. <laughs> Nor am I or anyone else I know. I'd love to be a part of some weird religious cult, just to see what kind of stuff they get up to, but alas, either I've never been invited or there are none found to be found in the holler. <laughs> As someone who's lived here my whole life and sincerely doubt there's anything remotely culty going on here. <laughs> Which I know is exactly what a cultist would say, but take my word for it, no one in town is gonna try to wicker man you. <laughs> He is so weird. He is actually way more wild than I thought he was. It sounds like you've got something to work on now. You should go back to Lumer Stella. Yeah. Alrighty, Oscar. See you later. So that's Oscar. Any other ideas? We should go to the mines. You don't see it? Oh, come on. The two of you is such a dynamic, you know? Classic dog and cat situation. Come on, I'll drive us. What? What is he talking about? Or what is what is what are they talking about? You follow Kanika to her van. It isn't long before you find yourselves outside of the Scarlet Mines. There's a small gathering of workers outside the entrance to the mines, picketing signs in hand. Is this a strike? They're striking? There was a whole group of them talking about it in the diner yesterday. Seems like the collapse is the last straw for some folks. Good for them, but I kind of thought there'd be more of them, you know? I hope it's not weird to talk to them while they're in the middle of all this. Don't worry, I know these guys. Most of them are in the diner at least a couple days a week. They'll be chill. Will they be chill talking to Tabitha's cousin, though? Well, if it isn't the boss's cousin. <laughs> You might have fooled us the other day, but word gets around fast.
Have you noticed how old I am now? I exercised a ghost from the library last night to get <laughs> at great personal cost. Hail and well met, fellow countrymen. What goes on here? <laughs> how goes the strike? <laughs> Just casually. Have any of you seen Stella? She's missing. I'm gonna say this. They're gonna think I'm totally nuts. <laughs> the miners stare at you. Don't be cute with us. We, you know, we're striking. It sure doesn't seem like it's going well. Why are you even bothering? There's only like three of you here. Better hours now, or none at all. I am unhappy with the treatment I am receiving as a worker in the Scarlet Mines. What are your grievances? We'd like competitive pay, 8 hour shifts instead of 12 or more, improvements to the sick day and vacation policies. And a thorough safety inspection before any of us set, step on foot underground again. That collapse was way too close to the active mine for me to feel safe down there until I know for sure I won't wind up buried under two tons of rock. We want to change things. There's no reason we should be treated like we're a disposable workforce. If we're the ones making her money, we should be making money too, not just scraping by. That's a lot of grievances. Working here seems tough. Yeah. Do you think Tabitha can even make those changes without the mines going under? I'm sure she can figure it out. I'm not saying she's not a bad boss. People clearly aren't happy with her. But coal's getting used less and less, and I've seen that old Scarlet House. It's practically condemned. If she has money to spare, where's it going? I really didn't peg you as someone who'd go to bat for Tabitha. I'm not. I'm just trying to get the full picture here. And if the mind fails, I don't see how Aunt Winnie's diner doesn't fail with it. Okay, but that's the whole problem. A single family shouldn't hold an entire town hostage. The workers need to need a say in the business. Fair enough. Yeah. It gonna collapse eventually. Y'all are just being greedy. Have any of you seen Stella? She's missing. The YouTuber. <laughs> that got me so bad. She's the one that banned the... She's the one on all the banned from property posters, right? We haven't seen her. And we've been out here all day, so we know if she came by. We'll make sure to keep an eye out. Let's head out. If that means we don't have to talk to Tabitha, that's fine by me. We've done our due diligence here. Come on, I'll drive us back to town and we can figure out our next move from there. Alright, I think that was solid. I don't think we need to talk to uh, Tabitha. Let's go to Stella's house. Let's go to the church. I see what you're thinking. Stella was confronted with evidence of the afterlife, so she might try to get into all that religious stuff. It's worth checking out. I think we'd be barking up the wrong tree, but I guess you're right. There's no point in not being thorough. I wouldn't mind stocking up on some holy water when we're there. Seems like a good idea to cover all our bases at this point. I don't think Baptists do the holy water thing, but I'm sure Pastor Daniel would pretend to bless some water if it meant keeping us around a little longer. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. That's good enough for me. Let's not linger, though. I don't want him thinking we're possible converts. Yeah, he crazy. Kanika leads the way, taking you up the gradual slope towards the church. I love the little alpacas, they're so cute. 
You know, I've lived here for a few years now, and I've never actually been to the church. That's probably for a good reason. Where's that weirdo? My, my! Four visitors at once on a Thursday! This is unprecedented. But there's only three of us. Oh no, were we followed by Ditchling? Were we followed by Wayne? <laughs> Supple people. Oh, it's just Zane. What are you doing here? <laughs> Poor Zane, man. He's just trying to vibe, you know? All the glimpses of death I've had in the past two days have forced me into the midst of an existential crisis. I just wanted to see if Faith held any answers for me. Alas, I have not found the solace I seek. Give it time, Zane. It does sometimes take a while for the Lord to work his way into your heart, but when he does, you won't regret letting him in. Be sure to look over those pamphlets I gave you, of course, and I'm always here if you need to talk. Sure thing, bastardy. Peace, y'all. <laughs> Why did he even come? Why did he even show up? Oh my god, Zane is so funny. Anyway. We're looking for Stella. She wandered off last night and no one has seen her since. We're starting to get pretty worried. We hope that maybe you or Janie had seen her. I can't speak for my wife, but I'm afraid that I've se seen neither hide nor hair of Stella. If you'd like to talk to her, if you'd like to talk to my wife, <laughs> she'd like to talk to Stella. If you'd like to talk to my wife, she's just over there by the alpacas. Though, Abs, I was hoping we might want to talk in private. Uh, why does it have to be in private? Excuse me, sir. It's a personal matter. I'd rather not. I'd rather folks not pry in on this. I won't bite or anything, I promise. We can just talk here, right in the open. Uh, I guess I'll leave you too while I go check with Janie. See you in a minute. Guys, why? Why are you abandoning me? All the way down there with the alpacas. I want to go see them. Look how cute they are. Your friends head off towards Janie and the alpacas. Leaving you alone with the nervous pastor. I'm so glad you decided to come and visit me. So many young people these days seem to think that they can solve all their problems on their own. Meanwhile, God is right there and ready to help them, if only they let them into their hearts. The pastor's eyes dark back towards the apocas. Okay, good, they're wrong. You're new to town. What kind of impression did I make on you? Am I creepy? Is this a different response to the pastor than we had before? Are you not going to comment on my appearance? You saw me yesterday. A ghost cursed me last night and now I'm old. Whenever I see you, it's like this ominous little piano starts playing. I think your problem is that you keep telling people what to do instead of actually treating them like human beings. You're extremely creepy. I think he's creepy. <laughs> I think this is part of, that this is part of the problem. If you have to pull strangers aside to ask them if you're creepy, you probably come off as creepy. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm gonna say what Keen Eye says. I think your problem is you keep telling people what to do instead of actually treating them like human beings. Like, have you tried inviting folks over fishing or hiking? Have you ever tried throwing a party? Or do you just hand people pamphlets and tell them to think about the big man upstairs? That would require people who want to do things like go fishing with me. I have to put in the effort, you know? Janie is excellent at making friends, but they've all made it clear that they're her friends. They try to avoid me whenever possible. I'm sure they've even suggested she divorce me. I don't know why it's so hard. I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh no, I sound bitter, I'm sorry. It's just that I've never been like, it's never been like this for me before. I had plenty of friends all through school. It's like Scarlet Hollow itself just wants me gone. 
<gasps> wait, 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 wait. This requires taking off my glasses. Do you think that it's the whole idea of how we've talked about before in, like, the previous playthrough and stuff? How Scarlet Hollow focuses on women. And anyone, any woman that has been married or, like, anything, the guy either dies or leaves town, gets the heck out. The guy never stays. If you're a lady, you're fine. But if you're a guy, this place is not for you. Unless you're from Scarlet Hollow. Unless you're born there. Then you have a little bit of a edge with it. But it seems that anyone that's an outsider that is a guy really has a heart in Scarlet Hall. He's interrupted by the sounds of a snapping twig and a high pitched giggle, partly muffled by the underbrush on the edge of the property. Tulip, come out of there. You know you're not supposed to play in the woods. Tulip glances back into the woods, quiet as she hesitates. Tulip, are you going to be good, or are we gonna start? Are we gonna skip story time tonight? I'll be good. You don't have to skip story time. I won't go in the woods. I promise. I know you won't, Tulip, because you know it's too dangerous for little girls in there. Why don't you go help Mama with the alpacas? It's just about time they got fed. You can give them hay. <laughs> Tulip smiles broadly, seemingly excited by the prospect, and hurries off. Sorry I had to have a firm parenting moment just then. She's been trying to run off into those woods a lot lately, and it's really dangerous, even for adults. There's this massive trash dump not too far from past the trees, but it must be at least 50 years old, and it's all grown over and looks like it's part of the landscape. But if you accidentally walk on it, you might find yourself falling into a hip-deep mound of rusty cans and broken glass. Tulip made up some imaginary friends and keeps telling us that they want her to go out there. Like the word of some fictional creatures she made up is going to convince me. It's going to convince us. <laughs> it's a good idea for us to play in someone's old garbage. But she's seven. Of course she would get some funny little idea like that. I'd love to get the community to rally around big cleanup. It's about time somebody got rid of all that junk. Oh, Tetanus Lake! Still told me about that. <laughs> how big is a trash dump? How big a trash dump we talking? Would a weekend of hard work clear it out? He might not be able to tell us about it, but from the other one we know that both him and the daughter have the gifts of being able to talk to animals so they can hear what animals think and they can communicate with them. Oh my god, I just noticed Wayne! Hey! Hey Wayne! How's it going? Why are you haunting me? <laughs> I never noticed him before, dude. I never noticed him before. Anyway, so the imaginary friends are actually like the mice that are living in the church. They're trying to... They're telling her things. And even though he can also talk to animals. He's not comfortable with the fact that the mice are talking to her. Like, you know, he'd think he'd be okay with it, but I think it has something to do with the mice specifically. Stella and her friends used to play out there all the time, and none of them got sick or died. Oh, Tennis Lake still told me about it. That's an accurate name. I wonder if Tulip would stay away if I started calling it that, or if it would only make it sound more alluring. <laughs> What's that you were saying about imaginary friends? Oh, she's just been talking about these friends of hers lately. Little stories about creatures that live in the church. I'm sure she saw some animal in there and decided it was her friend. It's nothing to be overly concerned about, except the trash heap situation. Out of the corner of your eye, you see Kanika and Avery walking back towards the two of you. They must have finished talking to Janie. 
Janie says she hasn't seen Stella either, so you better get going. Thanks for suggesting we head up here. We got to feed the alpacas. They were so cute and soft. It was awesome. I wanted to feed an alpaca. She's blocking Wayne now. And Janie says she'll come by the diner with cookies for the miners. And a few extra for me, of course. She's so nice. She even offered to bring me some since I'm feeling under the weather. I hope your talk with the pastor went well. Yes, we had a great conversation. I appreciate you all stopping by, even if it wasn't under the best circumstances. I'll let y'all be on the way. And I hope Stella turns up soon. I'll put in some good prayers at the big man for her. Alright, thanks. See ya. Hmm. He wanted to know why everyone in town thinks he's creepy. <laughs> he is creepy. That's kind of sad, isn't it? I don't think he has a lot of friends. People do weird things all the time and try to fit. Point taken, but that doesn't mean he isn't creepy. Let's not get too distracted until we find Stella, though. Where to next? Oh. Before you can suggest your next move, you start to feel woozy. Spots form at the edges of your vision. Your legs suddenly feel unstable, your body sending. You clear signals of exhaustion. And then it passes. Still, it probably won't be long before your body needs a chance to rest. Uh, okay, so we can't do all of these then. We have to go to Stella's house. I was too nervous to go anywhere myself this morning. Okay. You make your way towards Stella's house. The door is as pristine as any old wooden door. And no bloody handprints in sight. Any telltale sign of Wayne is absent. If something happened here, it didn't involve him. At least not at the front door. We have confirmed, I think. Well, from what? we assume, and what he's discussed with us, and what Tabitha seems to think, a multiple different things, <laughs> that Wayne watches us. Wayne is watching us, supposedly making, trying to protect us. So, um, Wayne is not a threat to anyone else. He is laser focused on us, so there is no need to be paranoid for Wayne, about Wayne, for anybody else, unless they try to, unless they become a threat to us. But I don't think anybody's a threat to us, realistically. Dear goals. The interior is cold and not just physically. There's an absence of joy in life that leaves only a chill behind. The ghost of an empty house, and the sobering dread that comes with the knowledge that your search won't end here. The house is quiet, the world outside muffled as you take a cautious step over the threshold into the muted air of the living room. You had a feeling Stella won't be emerging from the shadows to sleepily greet you. You seem to recall that Stella closed the door behind her when the two of you left for the library yesterday morning. I don't sense anything supernatural here, but I don't like the look of this. Nobody's here, and I don't think Wayne came knocking at the front door. Yeah, I don't see any goop. <laughs> they could have come in through the back or a window. It'd be really a weird coincidence if the front door was open and someone broke in somewhere else. Or maybe that's just wishful thinking. Let's just go on. Aside from a corner of the room dedicated to Gretchen, Stella's house almost feels like a museum. Everything's organized with the sort of tidiness you wouldn't expect from someone as rough and tumble as Stella, and only a handful of objects feel like they belong to her. Whatever happened to Stella doesn't look like it happened here. It doesn't look like there was a struggle or anything, unless it happened in another room, 
Or maybe someone or something caught her off guard. You didn't have to add that last part. I'm not going to forget that you said that. And just be... I'm going to forget that you said that. And just be thankful that this doesn't look like a crime scene. Investigate the kitchen. So the kitchen is messier than she left it yesterday. A couple cabinets are hanging open, and a loaf of bread sits on the counter by an unused butter knife. The crust of the bread has gone somewhat stale, about as much as you'd expect after being left out overnight. Whoever left it here left it many hours ago. It's a little messy, but it doesn't look like anything happened here. Someone was here after Stella and I left yesterday. We didn't leave the kitchen like this. So what, do you think someone rummaged through the kitchen? She must have come home last night. Why would anyone else leave the living room in one piece just to trash the kitchen? Maybe they got hungry. <laughs> That's literally what he said. I mean, the town's surrounded by monsters. Maybe they got hungry. I don't think they would leave like that, though. We have to look in her room, but I'm not gonna, like, peer into anything. Though it's a little untidy, it's the usual sort of untidiness that accumulates when someone doesn't often have guests in their bedroom. There aren't any signs of violence. No streaks of blood and pus that might belong to a certain phantom miner. He hasn't been here. You do notice, though, that her jacket is nowhere in sight. It isn't in her closet, and it wasn't in the coat rack in the other room. Her jacket's gone. The Letterman one. It wasn't on the rack in the other room and it's not in here. She didn't have it yesterday. Okay, I'm sold. Between this and the kitchen, she must have come home last night. And it seems like she was the one who decided to leave. No struggle or anything. It sure looks like her own. Any thoughts? <laughs> I think you summed it up. This is definitely her own. Yeah, nothing much to comment on. This is what her room's been like for pretty much the entire time I've known her. The only thing that's changed is the computer getting a lot fancier. I could use a few more houseplants. I'll pull- It could use a few more houseplants. I'll pull together some trimmings after we found her. Aw, she still does those cork board with string things. She loves putting a, the strings on there. I don't think they actually mean anything, but they're more for decoration anyway. Yeah, for the cryptids and stuff. Yeah, her room's pretty, pretty messy. But, you know, it is what it is. And it's not like she records, uh in this room. Like, I will say, I don't record in my room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, this isn't a green screen, but this is like a spare room, right? It would just be so annoying to try to sit down and record as often as I do and have to have a space that's constantly tidy for it. My room isn't like this. I will say it's not like this. I don't have anything on the ground, especially. But, uh, you know, like, I just, it's just something about, like, I like having, like, my bed space separate from, like, my workspace kind of thing. Like, mentally, it just feels better to be in a different space than where I go to relax. You know what I mean? Um, but also, it is that added thing of like, oh, I can come here when I need to record, I can bring things in here, but it's easier to keep clean than like my room, where I'm constantly washing clothes that I, that I need to put away, you know, and I have books that I'm reading and like projects that are just not finished, they're just sitting there. I mean, I do have stuff along here that you guys can't see <laughs> that's just chilling, but... 
I'm able to keep like this space mostly clean for you guys. But yeah, it is kind of a thing of like, you're prepared, you prepare yourself um, for when you have guests, you don't want it to be as messy or whatever. But yeah, I don't want to invade your space too much. We did it in the other one and we looked into the computer and it was just, it didn't really give any clues about her. It was just her latest uploads and stuff. Um, that she had looked up something recently in her history that was intriguing. But I don't want to uh, pry. Okay, so she probably came home last night, but she's not here now. We don't have any idea where she might have gone. I thought I was overthinking this morning. I hope she would just be sleeping in. I can't believe she's actually missing. We'll find her. We're gonna call the cops. I know they probably won't do anything, but we should see if we can get them to start looking for her before we go anywhere else. Whoa, you don't look too good. Blacks out. Oh shit, the general store is just around the corner. Let's get you inside. Yeah, we're just gonna go talk to, uh... Tea lady. <laughs> We're gonna go get the tea. The bells of the general store jingle, welcoming you, welcomingly as your companions drag you across the threshold. You can faintly make out the unintelligible mumbling of what must be voices, and then you fade out once again. Hi, Sybil. It's dark in here. The sunlight flittering through the heavy curtains, weak and watery. Practically supplemented by the bright glow, by the bright gro grow lights over the plant in the corner. Welcome back. It's just the two of us now, I'm afraid. Avery had to go help out at the diner, and Kanika is getting some much needed bed rest upstairs. I went ahead and made you some tea, dear. It should help you with your condition. Let me see. Your eyes drift to the cup of freshly brewed tea in front of you. It smells light and citrusy, with undertones of decaying earth. It's the same tea you sampled with Avery at the diner on Tuesday. Don't expect it to change. Your gray hair is back. But at the very least, it should make it easier for your mind and spirit to adjust to some of the physical changes you've gone through. Hopefully you'll feel a little less exhausted and a little less prone to passing out. And when you're finished, we can use the leaves for a reading. On the house, of course. Until then, why don't we just chat? Let's see. So how did you wind up in Scarlet Hollow? Sip your tea. Soothing beyond what you would expect out of the ordinary out of ordinary tea. There must be something magical at work in this blend. So how did you wind up in Scarlet Hollow? Well, my family's been in these hills for a long time. That's how I know so much of the local flora. Everything I've learned was handed down from generations of hill folk. I remember her saying that, yeah. There hasn't always been a reliable doctor up here, especially not one most folks could afford. They have to figure out their own medicine. What's with all the mystery and ritual? If you have something to tell me, just go out and say it. I'll need your tea leaves first. I have pieces of the puzzle, but the tea leaves should help to give me the full picture. Did you know my mom? But of course, in a town this size, you get to know everybody no matter what the age difference might be. Vivian was a little younger than me, which meant I always had a certain older sister instinct about her. Her family wasn't th good to her. Pearl Ann was a lot like your great-grandmother, Edwardine, which is to say she was not a very kind woman. <laughs> Similar to Tabitha, with more social grace and considerably more hatred for her fellow man. 
But your mother wasn't, uh, shrinking violent either. She was just as stubborn as any other Scarlet. So our family choosing her as their punching bag made her quite into quite the rebel. Why were Pearl Anne and my mother raised by Edward Dean? What happened to their mother? Their entry into this world was violent. Their mother was too young, too young to be pregnant, especially with twins. She didn't survive the labor. Yeah, what about the men? Do they even exist? I suppose they just haven't been very noteworthy since Aberdeen took over the mines. Her husband died a long time ago. To be quite honest, I can't even recall his name. <laughs> oh, poor dude. Might have been Stuart or something just as forgettable. Wow. Start all those Stuarts out there, damn. From what Vivian said, her father was some teenage fling that ended up once that ended once her grandmother found out that she was pregnant. Okay. I'm fairly certain it was similar for Vivian. Though she was much older, and I believe she was the one who ended it. What with skipping town and all. What do you know about my grandma? Maybe there isn't much I can tell you. I think there were two in that generation. The eldest died when the girls were still children. Edwardine never spoke about them, nor did your mother. What happened when my mom found out she was pregnant? She came to me for advice. She was distraught. It was like she'd been handed a death sentence. Maybe it was fear from what had happened to her own mother. Maybe it was something else. But she seemed convinced she was in danger. Tabitha had already been born then, of course, but she was born in wedlock. So I assumed your mother's worries had something to do with religion. Those Scarlets weren't particularly religious, as far as I knew. But the way Vivian was that night, she came to me, it stuck in my mind. It's always had me wondering what it was about your family that made her panic so much at the thought of having a baby. Oh, she's so serious about the tea. She's so serious. She's getting the, she's getting the reading. Oh dear, this doesn't bode well. You've got just about every warning that can fit at the bottom of a cup, cross, kettle, hourglass. All of these meet death, misery, difficulty, and the hourglass ties it all together with definite urgency. It's fair to assume that this all has to do with whatever brought the ditchlings. Something is coming, and whether any of us can stop it, I'm not sure, but we may be- but m we may, at the very least, be able to figure out what it is. And there's a certain figure here, a cat, an enemy, lurking in plain sight. I'd like to see. I'm sure it wouldn't make much sense to most people. It'll probably just look like a confusing mess of old leaves, but you're free to take a look. You take the cup, staring into it. It's just leaves, there's no pattern, nothing swimming together, no dreads of your tea to give you any warnings or premonitions. After a long moment, Sybil takes the cup back from you. I hope this settled your curiosity. Don't worry if you can make sense of it. It takes years to learn this sort of thing, even for someone with your propensities. <laughs> She winked. How do I know you're not the cat? Wait. That was weird. I suppose you don't.
So she wants us to find the stones. Who do you guys think the cat is? I completely forgot about that. So she says that there's somebody that's bad that's around us. Who could it be? Could it be Tabitha? I really don't think it's Tabitha. But could it be Tabitha? Could it be... Um... Wayne, I guess. Or something within Wayne. Could it be Reese? I don't really think it would be Reese because Reese isn't with us all the time. And we know what Reese becomes, or you're gonna see if you don't know. <laughs> but I know from playing the first run. Okay. And we're here at Reese's house. <sighs> it's taken me a year to come back here. It's like a magda has been fixated on your root cage, gently tugging it forward, guiding it towards whatever emits this compulsive frequency. Oh, there's the little raccoon. He's looking at the ditch like, what the F is that? Dude, we need a drink. Oh. Wayne, how's it going, Wayne? Yeah, I think I saw Wayne here before, but I did not see him at the, um, the church. Yeah, we aged wildly. The interior feels surprisingly modern compared to ex exterior. Though you can still glimpse the ornate bones of the building peeking through the decorative molding. An overly complicated banister lining the stairway. You can feel it. That odd sensation again. The nagging pull of whatever it was that wanted you to find it. You're here now, and it knows you're here, and you know exactly what it is. Another stone carving, eager to show you its secrets. Before you can drag, it can drag you too far into the clinic. Dr. Kelly puts aside her paperwork and makes her way down the hall. Hello, can I help you? What the hell happened to you? You look like you aged at least a decade since last night. Ghost made me old. You wouldn't believe me if I told you, but I think I need to see a doctor. Sure, it looks like you do. It's good you came. The exam room is just here, right? The doctor directs you down the hallway, and you follow her into the clinic's exam room. This is my first time in here. <laughs> I'm gonna get a checkup. I'm gonna be all better. I'm just gonna start with some general diagnostics, but I'd also like to do some blood work today if you're amiable to that. She presses a cold metal of her stethoscope to your chest. Have you heard from Stella? No one knows where she is. That face, so much concern. Dr. Kelly briefly removes the stethoscope from her chest. Stella's missing. This is the first I'm hearing about it. I haven't seen her. I'll make sure to check with Reese. I know he hears from her pretty frequently. But let's finish this up first. Will I have to pay for this? How much longer do I have left? I'm, I'm telling you, Doc, I'm old because of magic. It's not some kind of disease. Don't talk, I'm trying to listen to your heart. Even if that's the case, it's better for you to know the extent of the damage. If it had such a dra dramatic effect on your exterior, I can only imagine what it might have done to your organs. Speaking of, have you always had a heart murmur? No doctor has ever said that you've had a heart murmur. Before you can answer, she attaches a blood pressure cuff to your arm, inflating it with a few quick pumps of the bulb. The ends of your fingers tingle numbly as the cuff constricts. Remain silent. Her blood pressure is definitely high, 
higher than someone than I would expect for someone your age. It's not what I would call a safe range, but it can be managed. Let me know if you feel any pain. I'm interested in your thoughts on the folks around town. I'd like to know more about the clinic. Yeah, I'm just gonna prod these questions while you're giving me a checkup. How are my abs looking? Not bad, right? God, I'm not doing that. So have you noticed any ditchlings yet? I'd like to know more about the clinic. Well, it was an old hospital during the Civil War. Then one of those clean air clinics. Then around the time of the collapse, it was converted back into a hospital. But it lost most of its funding as people left town, so now it's just a doctor's office. With an astronomical heating bill, all the massive windows and glass doors make this an icebox in the winter. If there were to be a big stone carving hidden somewhere in the clinic, where would that be? What happened here after the mine collapsed? I suppose the only thing I know is that the average resident of the holler, that the average resident of the holler might not, is the collapse was the reason this was converted into a proper hospital. The wounded were brought here, where there were beds and medical supplies, and that pulled out the last dregs of the clean air cooks. No one thought the air around here was that clean after the coal mile, coal mine collapse filled it with ash and in theory was already on its way out at that point and the theory was already on its way out yeah I'm interested in your thoughts on folks around town. Really don't need to do small talk. Did you know my mom well? Small talk it is then. I did, we were friends growing up. She was sarcastic, but nice. I liked that about her. And a hell of a lot more pleasant to be around than her sister. <laughs> okay, so she was friends with their mom, crazy. I would not have thought that. Do you know any history about my family? What did you think of Pearl Ann? Vivian and I used to joke that she was the evil twin, though I'm not sure you can call it a joke if it's true. Sorry, I really shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Do you know Sybil well? The doctor stiffens at the question. Of course she doesn't like Sybil. Dr. Kelly doesn't seem the type to, be, to get along with anyone. I know her as well as anybody else. She's yet another resident girl at Hollow who should really come see me more often, but she has her own ideas about health. She seems to think drinking a gallon of tea a day will grant her immortality. I'm sure I'll be seeing more of her when she realizes that's not the case. Do you know any history about my family? Of course I do. Folks around here learn all the important myths about your family. The whole bootstraps thing with Silas, the founding of the town by the almighty Andrew J. Scarlet, and of course the big collapse, and the evil Charles Shaws who gets all the blame. Your family is a big deal in this town, of course I know about them. Only as much as anyone else though, I'm not really into local history. So have you noticed any ditchlings yet? Maybe I've seen some weird things outside the windows. I don't know what they are, I won't jump to any conclusions, but there's definitely some weird stuff going on around town that defies logic. You're proof enough of that. This exam is depressing. <laughs> are we almost done? I have stuff to do with my day. Really appreciate you looking out for me. Should I flirt? I'm so tempted to flirt. Is it even worth it? Cause I'm gonna kill her off, right? Let's do it. I'm not palpitating you for fun. This is just my job and I take it seriously. I like to check your lungs. Can you breathe for me? Make sure you keep a tight seal on it.
Judging on your age and what I'm able to tell from a quick once over, it's looking like you're the equivalent of at least a decade older, and not a good decade. I'm guessing the blood work is going to show about the same. Whoa, hey, no needles. <laughs> oh, so you're finally going to poison me like you poison your son. Can you, should I say that? Should I actually say that? I'm gonna feed my blood to your vampire son. Am I gonna wind up some research guinea pig now? You're gonna write papers about me. <laughs> How do I know you're not going to poison me? <sighs> okay, let me see here. I'm curious. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You know what? Okay. First of all, the syringe is empty. <laughs> but if you're gonna keep making these accusations, you can always leave. The door is right there. I'm doing this out of a sense of duty to my fellow man. So if you don't want my free services, you're free to leave whenever you want. I was just joking. You can go ahead and stick me. Get up and leave. Could we leave? Actually? And not trigger anything to happen? You think so? Is that an option? Oh no, I can't leave. Okay. Um, I kind of want to finish my exam. No. She does poison her son. But she does it for a good reason, I guess you could say. Okay, Doc, stick me with it. I barely feel it, I promise. She was wrong, you definitely feel it. But it doesn't last long. Okay. We got BND. See, that's all we had to do. Not bad at all. Alright, that's all we can do for now. I'll make sure to notify you when I get the results. And I'll send them to your GP. You do a regular doctor back home, right? I don't have health insurance. I don't trust doctors. Of course I do. <laughs> Good. They're in for a shock when you get back home, that's for sure. You're free to go. You know how I want to find the door. Okay, so we go to the morgue, right? And there's Reese just chilling. I totally thought he was dead initially. I was like, oh my god, he's dead, and then I went into all these theories, and then I clicked, and then he got up. <laughs> he squints, seemingly unsure whether you're the same person he met yesterday. He's also so pale, like, you'd really think that he was, you know. H hi. <laughs> he's so cute. Have you seen Stella around? He wouldn't see her, he hasn't been anywhere. Am I interrupting them? No, I was just practicing, I guess. Sometimes I come down here to rehearse. Not gonna lie, it's kinda weird, dude. Rehearse, you say? We have to break the wall. Use your words. Don't let this fur consume you. Be present in the moment. 
Can't help but notice one of the bo one of the body storage drawers is labeled Perlam's garment. <gasps> no. No way. Oh, we have to. We have to look. Oh, <gasps> that's terrifying. So this is your aunt Perlan. Cole Baroness of the Scarlet Mines. The local she devil that seemed no one, not even her own daughter, was able to mourn. This is not the first corpse you've seen, but it feels the same as any other. She's an empty body now. The warmth and energy of life now dissipated. The same as your mother was, and the same as you'll be one day. Cold air rises from her bluish skin, her vacant, filmy eyes staring up at nothing. You try to imagine what she may have looked like alive and breathing, slinging subtle insults at the townsfolk, but it's hard to picture any expression on her face so stiff and cold with death. Making sure she didn't walk it off. <laughs> she didn't walk off. Poker, just to make sure. That is so creepy. Everything going on lately, it's good to check. I'll get the dock to make sure the drawer is locked from here on out, just to be safe side. God, that's so terrifying. That was not an option before. That was not an option before. Or I was like, no way am I doing that. The mines had a stone carving the other night, as did Oscar's house yesterday. They've been giving me visions, and I can see one on the other side of the wall. I need to see it. Reese glances back at the wall. You're really serious, aren't you? This is probably a bad idea, but if you really need to get in there, I'm pretty sure there's an emergency act somewhere upstairs. I just need to get the dock out of our hair. It should take two seconds. Yeah, if I say I'm sick and I need something, she'll drop whatever she's doing and do it for me. Sure, far away to get her out of the house. And most of the time it's true anyway. <laughs> doesn't this, doesn't that make her worry about you even more? Call me manipulative all you want, but sometimes I just need some time to myself. If that means I take a little white I have to tell a little white lie every now and then. So be it. I can live with that. He seems excited, but his usual dour demeanor replaced with an uncharacteristic pep when faced with the prospect of sneaking around and tearing down walls. <laughs> you hear his soft voice filtering in through the open doorway at the top of the stairs. A hoarse and sickly edge added for effect as he speaks to his mother. Hey, Mom. He coughs gently. <coughs> Reese, I didn't know you were awake. I still feel like shit, but I think I can finally try to keep some juice down. It looks like we're all out, though. Really? I thought I'd just pick some up. I've got an errand to run on Main Street anyway. I'll go pick up some orange juice and some ginger ale, too. That would be awesome. Sorry to ask. I know you're probably busy. It's no problem. It doesn't take long. Don't do anything too strenuous while I'm gone. Just lie down in bed till I get back. Thanks, Mom. I'll take it easy. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> As you step out of the morgue, you relax. The extra space between you and the carving has weakened its hold on you, and with it, your desperation to claw your way through the wall and unveil it. Alright, so we gotta go get the stuff. Did we read the files before? <laughs> Her middle name.
name is Chrysanthemum. <laughs> That's terrible. So that last person was our great grandmother. Since Sybil said that we had a great grandmother. And the reason that the other the grandmother raised our parents or whoever instead of the mother was because the mother died in childbirth. So she was 17. That's really young. Let him in! Let him in. How could you not let him in? You know, I don't think it's ever not gonna be tempting, but not in this run. We've done it before. <laughs> Go check out my other one if you wanna see that. I definitely romanced uh, Reese. The two of you stand in tense silence, both crammed in the suffocating closet, taking shallow breaths as if she could hear you breathing from the other side of the building. But the footsteps soon return. Dr. Kelly makes her way towards your hiding place, creaking forwards. <gasps> oh god. They get louder. She opens another door, leaving the main clinic. We're in the clear. <laughs> your axe. <laughs> a splash of brown catches your eye. There's a small sprig of what almost looks like furry berries, with a wide, eight-pronged leaf still attached to the base. The end of the sprig is leaking sap on the countertop. It's fresh. Marie stops mid sentence as you notice you're staring at the plant. The plant. Does she make her own medicine? I don't think she's allowed to do that. She's not a pharmacist. This room is just for storing stuff she orders for patients. From a pharmacist in whatever that is. Why would she be making her own? Reese smiles at the idea of something spooky. Good. I feel like I've been missing out lately. Stop asking questions. It's time to see what's on the other side of the wall. Wall, wall, wall. Have at it. Bang it, bang it. Holy shit. There's a whole hallway back there. Is there? Is it back here? <laughs> this is a good one for a thumbnail too. I like it. It's really nice. No crazy signs of Reese yet. Just some dots on his forehead. I don't think any of this is gonna change. This is wild. I had no idea any of this was here. An entire hospital wing rotting away for decades behind some flimsy drywall. The final wall concealing the carving is rotten. Water damage from eaten away at the wood over the course of unknowable years. The planks nearly reduced to sawdust. You tear into it. Talk to a witch. It's alright, it's all sorted. We're taking you home today and everything will be resolved by this time next week. Is that the one that fell down the hill? They killed him. 
And he said, wow, he never came back. Or is that one of the people that was in the... Uh, that was in war or whatever? Okay, so we had a seizure again. I had a vision. Didn't call an ambulance when I started seizing. Dr. Kelly, you know I'm here. Wait, nothing happened? The mountain didn't collapse on us? No ghosts? No, nothing. You just fell down, twitched a little, and when you seem stable, I carried you back here. But you have a delicate constitution! Thanks, man, I appreciate it. Great, I'll, at least, I'll have at least one mostly normal day this week. I'm gonna say, but you have a delicate constitution. What? I wasn't super- it wasn't super far or anything. I just picked you up and carried you. I might be sick a lot, but that doesn't mean I'm made of paper. <laughs> I'm sure I'll pay for it later, but I didn't want you to have to wake up in that musty hallway or in the morgue. Dr. Killy, no, I'm here. No, I stuck you back into the house while she was busy in the medical storage room. Vision. Like a hallucination? I have those sometimes too. Used to have a lot of them as a teen. Always just weird little things like my hands would look wrong or my neck would seem too long or the room would feel smaller. Oh, you weren't having hallucinations, Reese. If only, if only you knew, Reese. If only. At least one of those death records is murky. I don't think Teddy died in the mind collapse. My family has secrets. That's a weird thing to cover up, but it's not too surprising. An old family like that usually has a few, at least a few secrets. But hopefully it's all ancient history. It's not like it's easy to cover up deaths these days, right? You didn't call an ambulance when I started seizing. I think Dr. Kelly's looking over now. I don't think you'll want her to do that. Oh, you're out. I looked this up. Wait. The angry race. We need we need to take in the angry race. <laughs> Look at him. Look how mad he is. I mean, I would be mad too. This is this is absolutely like the worst thing ever. She's not the kind of doctor you want in charge of your health care. I should know. I'm the one she's been poisoning for years. And then he reveals this these drawings in the background about what he turns into. I didn't even see that before. It's a possibility of what... I've been thinking about what you've said at dinner last night, and I don't see any other possibility. It's, the, it's only been a day since I stopped taking my pills and I feel great. The doc's on the warpath over there, up there over it. I have no idea what she's doing, but I blocked my door so she can't get down here. I just have to wait her out. You blocked your door? You blocked your door? Of course I did. Put a chain in front of it. It's never failed before. We don't need her coming down here to finish me off or whatever it is she might do now that I know what her treatment plan has been all these years. Heck yeah, I'll sleep over, but I need to leave. Makes sense. <clears throat> Makes sense. <laughs> I get it, dude. That's fine. No, I wouldn't be okay with that. I don't know. Maybe I would be. How does that not sound rational? Also, how could you act rationally when you found out something crazy like that? We should treat her as a serious threat. This might sound strange, but I think she's gone to some desperate lengths in the past. There are these weird memories I have. I always assumed they were just dreams or hallucinations, but now I'm not so sure. I think she's used tranquilizers on me. Other times, I've gotten too unruly for her. I don't know how much of those memories I can trust, but I'm starting to think I should believe my instincts when it comes to the lens she's willing to go to keep me under her control. I don't 
get why she would do that. I don't know. But the instinct says this is- but the instinct. <laughs> the internet. <laughs> so this is castor bean. It used- it's used to make ricin, a super deadly poison that causes some of my exact symptoms. And death usually. The one thing I can't figure out is whether she'd been trying to kill me slowly, or if she just likes keeping me sick enough to be dependent on her. Either way, I don't think I've ever had an illness. I think the illness was me growing up and becoming less easy to control. But you see, what's wrong here is that he was never hard to control. Not, not really. Not except for, you know, the side that we didn't know about. That technically we don't know about. Still. Um, the side that he didn't even know about. That he has. But it's control, but it's not, um, it's not that kind of control. How are you not dead? I don't know. Maybe it's at low enough doses, or maybe I developed a tolerance. But I think the fact that I feel more and more alive by the minute is proof enough that she's keeping me sick with your evidence you should be able to go to the cops maybe not a local cops but a cop <laughs> The only person I know who has a car is Kanika, and she's not answering her phone. I don't know anyone else. I don't know any- I don't have any other family to go to. I never even finished high school. When I get out of this house, I don't know how I can make sure that I don't wind up right back here. We can figure it out together. You'll help me? I couldn't ask that of you. But I guess I don't have much of an alternative. Thank you. You have no idea how much this means to me. Distraction sounds like a good idea. As you can probably tell, I'm getting a little jittery. Maybe it's the lack of poison in my system. For the first time in years, the fact that my whole perception of reality has been turned on its head. Probably a combo. What if your mom doesn't fall asleep? You shouldn't call her my mom. As far as I'm concerned, she's forfeited that title. I don't think I could... I don't think I should even call her doctor. She seems like some woman now. <laughs> Can't wait for her to be in the rearview mirror for the rest of my life. If she doesn't fall asleep by 10, we can figure something else out. The windows are supposedly shatterproof, which she always said was for burglars. Now I assume there was another way to keep me boxed in. But we can try to find- we can try to break them anyway. <laughs> but we can try to do it. <laughs> That's the energy his hand is giving me. You could always draw me. <laughs> Should I flirt with him again? I feel like I always flirt with him. There's a quality to drawing that's almost like catching memories. As sappy as that probably sounds. But this can be a sort of snapshot of my life. The night my life turned around. It's definitely a memory worth holding on to. I'll get you a chair. Aww, he's so cute with his little, his little palette. That one is a clipboard, right? He excitedly hurries across the room. Oh, he's excited. You can see the difference in his energy now that he hasn't had his daily dose of poison. He's more talkative, less slouched. His long limbs no longer perpetually tucked in at his sides. May I touch your face? Sure, blush. Please do. You don't even have to ask permission. You don't need to. I know my best angles. <laughs> 
What do I say? Someone help me. All of these are awkward. Uh... Does that mean... No. Oh, close. Okay. Place the gentle hand on your jaw, tilting your head slightly to the side. His fingertips are warm on your cheek, the sensation of their light touch lingering on your skin as he pulls away. Perfect. He pauses for a moment, his eyes locking with yours, a palpable tension filling the room. Let him start drawing. Thanks for doing this. You have no idea how long it's been since I was able to have somebody sit for me. I think it's been like since high school, probably. He starts sketching. The scraping of the graphite is quick and controlled. Long lines sweeping across the paper. He pauses for a brief moment, glancing away in thought. I wanted to draw you since we met yesterday. You have such striking bone structure. It makes for a truly unique face. I hope I can capture it. He glances up at you every couple of seconds. The pencil still moving as he focuses his intense gaze on you. This is so much easier than usual. Sometimes getting the basic forms down can feel like pushing through mud, but this is like breathing. It's just flowing out. Continues scratching out your portrait. The sound of the pencil on paper louder and bolder as he, his strokes gain confidence. I can't believe I let this go for so long that I never questioned her. That I was so readily accepted the line she gave me about my years being numbered and my illness being some bizarre mystery genetic thing that no other doctors could solve. I know it's hard to see when you're stuck in, when you're in the thick of it, but I was just so naive and who knows what lasting damage she meant to do to me. You realize it isn't confidence that's deepening the lines on the paper, it's anger, frustration. You don't have to focus on what could have been. You have a new future ahead of you. Yes, get angry. You have every right to feel that anger. Hey, dial it back, buddy. Let's get you out of this basement. I think it's stressing you out. You don't have to focus on what could have been. You have a new future ahead of you. I don't know that for sure, and I'm not out of danger yet either. I'm still down here. Yeah, well, you're not- you're not making any steps to get out of here, dude. Sorry, I thought I had, like, a hair that was itching me. The pencil snaps. Oh. Oh no, I'm sorry. I must be acting strange. I feel strange. Do my nails look longer to you? Wayne! Don't get any closer to that thing. It's time to go home. That voice. I know that voice. Is that who's been following you around? Out another word, Wayne starts pounding on the supposedly shatterproof window. Enemies upstairs, enemies outside, we're surrounded. Even if I get out of this house, we'll be safe. You won't be safe. What do you mean? Wayne isn't going to hurt you. He hasn't hurt anyone. Why did you call- Why did he call you that thing? Oh yes! The music! My favorite! Wayne isn't gonna hurt you, he hasn't hurt anyone. What do you mean? Wayne isn't gonna hurt you. Oh wait, I just read that. Yes, he will. He's furious with me. Can't you hear it? <laughs> oh, so spooky. But I'm not weak anymore. I can fight back. I don't have to cower in fear from the people who want to hurt me. I can protect both of us. Oh! The glass is broken. The window shatters. And so it begins. Reese tears at his clothes. Paint bubbles out from the canvases. His gallish figures peeling themselves from out of their two-dimensional worlds, invading yours, crawling up the walls. God, I love this song. It is my favorite. Grab my hand, I'll pull you out. I can't get over there, Wayne, I'm sorry. Leave us alone. <laughs> so fucking crazy. So crazy. 
as it manifests. In a surge of violence, the change that has been brewing inside me finally comes. As it manifests, the broken basement window is sealed off and weighing along with it. Stay where you are. We aren't safe. I feel strong now. I think I can save us. Stay here. I'll be right back. I just have to deal with the dog. Okay, I don't want to call Tabitha, because she'll just make the decision for herself, right? Wait for Reese in the basement. Yeah, it's not gonna do anything. So cool. God, it's so cool. Oh, the kitchen is tiny. Wait, where's the table? That was here. It's so small. Maybe it's on the other side. You make your way to the door that beckoned to you yesterday. All intrigue now washed away. You know where it leads. You know what secrets the stone that lurked in the forgotten basement of the clinic had to share with you. Now the clinic holds a new horror, somewhere beyond the narrow hallway leading from the house proper to the doctor's office, there is a monster preparing to do something unthinkable. Open the door. Doc! What? Where? The gun isn't very low. Damn it. As if you could hope to stop me, you pathetic waste of flesh. But I like Reese. So you can keep poisoning for him forever. Is that how this happened? You helped him sleuth that out? Well, good job. Now you can see why I would choose to give my own son lethal doses of poison every day. If I don't, he turns into a murderous machine. Now listen to me. You're in the medical storage room, right? I need you to use the black taped key to get into the cabinet. <laughs> there he is. An intercom system, hot huh, dog? Good, you should hear this. You don't have to do anything, she says. I'm not gonna hurt anybody else, just her. If you do if I don't, you and I both know she's just gonna shoot me full of elephant tranquilizers. Did I hear that right? And shove me back down in the basement. Oh, that's so creepy. Or maybe someplace even worse. Keep killing me every day for the rest of my miserable existence. I feel amazing right now. Better than I ever have in my entire life. Not dangerous. She's just scared because she knows she has to finally pay for what she's taken from me. Can't you two just get along? <laughs> Where in hell were No, sorry, we're past that point. I want retribution. Even more than that, I want security. As long as she lives, I'm in danger. Reese, I love you. I never wanted it to get to this point. Don't try to make up for now. It's too late. You wanted a relationship. You had your chance. You decided to convince me I was dying instead of just letting me exist. Enough. Coming out of Wayne's sleeve. Mm -hmm. 
There's something about keeping a secret for so long. It makes you paranoid. It makes you do things you are object that are objective you know are objectively wrong just to maintain the illusion of your life. It isolates you. At some point, you just don't want to be alone anymore, whether you realize it or not. So you get sloppy, you leave things around you shouldn't because the destructive little part of you wants to test the limits of how obvious you can be before someone is able to put two and two together. I'm not blind. I can see that things are happening in Scarlet Hollow. Unusual things. I guess subconsciously, I must have decided If there was ever a time to let someone else in, it would be now. Was his dad similar? A strange little smile creeps onto her face. That's so weird. You don't know how much I theorize on that, like, single thing of her, like, actually loving the fact that some random freaking, you know, crazy person or demon apparently raped her. <laughs> You know, it just kind of happened. I wasn't seeing anyone. I just woke up pregnant one day. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> and, a, and a doctor more than anyone should know that. <laughs> they were actually kind of sweet. They were just dreams. But then all of a sudden my period stopped. I got morning sickness and roughly nine months later, peace. I can fix him! I can do it! <laughs> Don't you think it might be a self-fulfilling prophecy? <laughs> what does that mean? He's been kind to me. Yeah, and Ted Bundy was kind to people he picked off the side of the road and he slaughtered them. He's really a sweet kid most of the time, but I can't let that overshadow the violence he's capable of. But you don't know that he's gonna do that. Kia coming. Oh lord, he's coming. <gasps> he's good. He lord. Oh my god, you didn't get them, did you? Oh my god, he's huge! Yeah, should we watch? Do we want to watch? Uh, you know, I've already seen a dead body today. A crunch and a pop, ew! Welcome to the Dead Moms Club. <laughs> no, I can't say that. What happened to Wayne? Wayne. Oh. I pushed him out a window. Be careful around him. Messed up my shoulder somehow. Still isn't working right. He's evil. Really evil. He, f he hates me. I can feel it. It almost seems like you recognized him. Maybe there's something familiar about him. Like I've met him before, the way he talked, but I don't know for sure. Sorry, it's been a long day. Hold him tight. Oh. He just needs a hug. You can see the sadness in his eyes, staring into yours from his inhuman face. Viscera is still dripping from his mouth. You lean in and wrap your arms around him. It takes him a moment to react, seemingly shocked at your touch, but his arms fold around you, his wide palms pressing you gently against him, holding you against his chest. Oh, he closes his eyes. He's crying. Oh. Sorry you had to be here for this, but thank you for understanding me. I need to get out of here. Go to a place where there aren't any memories, but I'll see you soon. 
Aww. Well, he's free. It's like, I don't know if it's right to kill her. But at the same time, it's not right to keep him there. We totally betrayed her. We totally played a part in that murder. There's characters like that because honestly, there's only two days left, right? Or it's Thursday. We have till Sunday. So we have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So there's three days left. You know, like, so. I don't know, but. He appears as if out of nowhere, clothes streaked and what at first looks like blood and gore, but you quickly realize it's paint. Evidence of his altercation with race. I'll walk you. Thank god, I'm glad you're okay. But it was a strange kind of coughing sound. You realize he's laughing. Shall we? Lane walks just ahead of you in near complete silence. Maybe that was funny to him because he can't die. Like, maybe he is undead. I never thought about that. Do you know- did you know Reese was like that? I knew he was different. How exactly? I wasn't sure. But now I know. I should be able to make quick work with him next time. But I like him. He's just misunderstood. No, he's not complex enough to be misunderstood. He's a miserable walking weapon that spends all his time feeling sorry for himself. It would be best for the world if he were put down. Uh, do you think that you? And what makes you think that you can make that decision? I mean, it's the same as his mom. <laughs> but at least his mom was trying to defend her own you know, like, if he were to come after her, you know what I mean, she would try to defend herself. So if he were to come at Wayne, I mean, that's his problem. But if he leaves people alone, then leave him alone. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, if it's self-defense, yeah, but you can't otherwise just make that decision about someone. Even if they're, they got some issues. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... They might need to be, like, have something that helps them, but, or, like, you know, be contained in some sort of way, eventually, if there is no way you're able to, way for them to live a normal life, but, I don't know, I don't know the case for him. I guess, I guess it really is that he couldn't survive, but... You know, this is all about making the wrong choices and <laughs> seeing how how much we can snowball everything. So, aren't you gonna lecture me now? You're free to make your own decisions and those decisions have been made. I know that something pulls at you and I know that now you cannot stop until your task is finished. I'll keep you safe while you do what you must. Thank you for looking out for me. <gasps> flirt with Wayne! We can flirt with him. Oh my god, can I? Do you know what happened to Stella? She ran off, didn't she? Remember that. If you find her, she won't be there if you need her. Wow, that's kind of rough to say about somebody. His little eyes. I found my family's death records today. Things aren't adding up. Good, you're starting to see the holes then. Look for more. Thanks for looking out for me. Anytime you find yourself in danger, I'll be there for you. I'll always be there for you. 
You don't need to keep coming with this new topics of, topics of conversation to fill the silence. You're tired. It's been a long night. You should rest. <gasps> no! I didn't get to do the romance option, guys. No. Blood stained, free and beautiful. Oh, poor Reeves. And we never found Stella. I really wanted to get that ending of Stella too. I don't know how to get it though. You get the cutscene that explains what happened to her parents, right? It's really sad to Hardcore mode. Hardcore mode allows you to select three traits at character creation, but you no longer be able to choose your traits to avoid the consequences for major decisions. Wait. You'll no longer be able to use your traits to avoid the consequences. The consequences. Consequences. I almost said consequations. Consequences of major decisions. So but you'll be able to use them to help yourself, like gather information, but you won't be able to turn the tide with them. So like, you could use the strong one. I don't know what else you would need it for, but you wouldn't be able to use it to protect both Gretchen and the old man. Because you can do that. But in hard mode, that would, I think that's the major decision for that episode. So, it wouldn't let you do that. Okay. Well, maybe we do a run where we try to save both of them. And then we try to do, um... I don't even know in the mines. I guess kill, make all the people get lost in there. And then, um... Episode three. I can't even imagine going through it again. I did not, I don't, I didn't like episode three. It was, it hurt my brain. It was just like, so, it made me really, really stressed. This, this episode is my favorite by far. Um, it's creepy, but it's good. Alrighty guys, well thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I always enjoy a good Scarlet Hollow. Uh, a couple hours, um, I wonder what you guys think. Have you gotten any of these before? Did you, is there anything that I should try to do? if I do another run. Um, maybe I should try to romance Wayne. <laughs> I wanted to, I just wanted to see where that would go. He's so, he's so, he's got a lot, I feel like. I feel like all these other people, they've given us so much information that we could theoretically probably figure out more if we really like went through some of the clues and stuff. But for, specifically for um, Wayne, we just don't have, th there's just so much there that we just know nothing about. So, maybe we need to talk more with Tabitha. But I definitely think Tabitha knows what happened to Wayne. Wayne also knows that Tabitha knows and it's linked to our family and for some reason Wayne feels the need to protect us 
I don't know if he's doing it for Tabitha. Or if it's just a sense of obligation. It seems like it's a sense of obligation. But maybe it's obligation to Tabitha. I don't know. But there's definitely a lot of gray area there. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I will definitely be back with Scarlet Hollow whenever the um, next chapter releases. But I wanted to get this out before Halloween, so here it is. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Happy Halloween. <laughs>